In this video, we introduce the informal notion of a limit, and we're going to start this one out with an example that helps to motivate our definitions, and then we'll quickly cover our informal definitions for limits and one-sided limits, and then finally we'll work through two additional examples of evaluating limits and one-sided limits based on the graph of a function. So in our opening example, we're given a rational function x squared minus 1 divided by x minus 1, and we're asked to plot this function and then comment on the behavior near x equals 1. And that's where we want to start talking about the idea and notation for a limit. So to graph this thing, we immediately notice there's a problematic value of x, which happens to be 1. And that's because the denominator vanishes at x equals 1. So we know this point needs to be thrown out of the domain. We also notice the formula for this function simplifies really nicely. If we look at x squared minus 1 over x minus 1, that numerator is a difference of two squares. We can write that as x plus 1 multiplied by x minus 1. Now the x minus 1 in the denominator will cancel the x minus 1 in the numerator, and our function simplifies to x plus 1. So we can say that f of x is actually equal to x plus 1, but we have to keep in mind that x can't be equal to 1 because that causes a vanishing denominator in the original definition of f of x. So now that we have this simple formula, f of x equals x plus 1, we recognize that as the equation of a line with a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of 1. So there's a picture of that line, but notice that we had to poke a hole in it to deal with the fact that we know x can't be equal to 1. So to comment on the behavior near this point, x equals 1, first I want to say f of 1 is undefined because it causes that division by 0 problem. So we can't actually talk about f of 1 itself. But we can talk about what happens if we get close to x equals 1, and we can talk about that in a couple different ways. If we get close to x equals 1 from the left, I see that f of x is getting close to 2. And there's a special notation for that, and this is the idea of a left-sided limit. So I can say the limit as x goes to 1 from the left, we just use a little minus sign for that, of f of x, that's equal to 2. That just means f of x itself gets very close to 2 as x gets close to 1 from the left. In other words, values of x that are slightly less than 1. We can do a similar thing on the right side and say the limit as x goes to 1 from the right, meaning we're getting very close to 1, but the values are slightly bigger than 1. So we approach 1 from the right, and in that limit, f of x is also going to be very close to 2. There are no unusual jumps or anything in this function, so we get that same y value as we approach x equals 1 from the right. Now, because the left and right limits agree, we can also talk about this as what I could call an ordinary limit. If I just say the limit as x goes to 1 of f of x, no matter which way I approach x equals 1, f of x gets very close to 2. So we can just say the limit as x goes to 1 of f of x is equal to 2. So that's a basic introduction to the informal idea of a limit and our limit notation. And now we can get into our informal definitions. And this is really just mirroring everything we just did in that example. So in our first definition, we say that if f of x becomes arbitrarily close to l, just some number l, as x becomes arbitrarily close to some number a from the left, then we'll say that the limit as x goes to a from the left of f of x is equal to l. So just to clarify there, our x was 1 in the last example, and x was getting close to 1 from the left, and our l was 2. So f of x got close to 2 as x got close to 1 from the left, and we said the limit as x goes to 1 from the left of f of x was equal to 2. Now we have a similar definition for a right-sided limit. If f of x becomes arbitrarily close to some number l, as x becomes arbitrarily close to some number a from the right, then we write it this way. The limit as x goes to a from the right, using just a little plus sign there, of f of x is equal to l. And then finally, if the left and right-sided limits agree with each other, then the ordinary limit exists, and we just say the limit as x goes to a of f of x is equal to l. Note that this is actually an if and only if statement. So if the ordinary limit exists, I can turn this around and conclude that the left and right limits both exist and agree with each other. So we're going to work a couple more examples to get some practice with the ideas and notation here. And our first example is actually a really famous function called the unit step function. So this function is zero if I'm left of the y-axis, in other words, if x is less than zero. And then it suddenly jumps to a value of 1 right there at the origin. So notice it doesn't include the origin in its graph. Instead, f of 0 is equal to 1. 
and then it stays at 1 forever as we go to the right. So in other words, f of x is equal to 1 when x is greater than or equal to 0. So we're asked to compute a few limits here, and the first one is the limit as x goes to 0 from the left. Remember, that's what the minus sign means. The limit as x goes to 0 from the left of f of x. And so I think about values of x that are slightly less than 0, but getting close to 0. And I can see every one of those corresponds to a y value of 0. So we're on that first branch of the unit step function. Now the limit as x goes to 0 from the right, that means x is getting close to 0, but x is a little bigger than 0. That puts us on the upper branch of the unit step function. Every single f value is 1 there. So f of x is getting close to 1 as x gets close to 0 from the right. Now because the left and right limits didn't agree there, that means the ordinary limit simply doesn't exist. f of x isn't getting close to one particular value as x gets close to 0. So in this case, we normally abbreviate with a DNE, standing for does not exist. In our second example, we have a wild piecewise defined function. It's kind of all over the place, but there's two interesting values of x on this graph. The first one is x equals 0. And I see a sudden change in the curve there. There's a kink in the curve and an open point there. And then I have a solid point there indicating the f of 0 is actually equal to 1. And then my other interesting value of x is x equals 2, where I have a big jump in the graph. So we're going to evaluate the left, right, and ordinary limits at each of these interesting values of x. So we start with the limit as x goes to 0 from the left. And that means we're approaching x equals 0 like this. So we're getting closer and closer to x equals 0, but the x values are slightly negative. And I can see that f is getting very close to 4 as x gets close to 0 from the left. So that limit is 4. The right-handed limit at x equals 0 is going to have the same value. In that case, I'm approaching x equals 0, but the values of x are slightly bigger than 0, so I'm on this other branch of the function, getting really close to x equals 0, and I can see that f gets really close to 4 again. Now, because those two limits agree with each other, the ordinary limit exists, and we can say the limit as x goes to 0 of f of x is equal to 4. So I want to point out that the limit as x goes to 0 of f of x turns out to be 4, but that's not equal to f of 0. And this is actually a formal way of noticing that the graph is discontinuous there. So if you want to learn more about how continuity is formally defined, I'll post a link to the video on continuity up at the top. Moving on with part D, now we're investigating limits around x equals 2. So we start with a limit as x goes to 2 from the left. In other words, values of x that are slightly less than 2. That puts us on this branch of the function that's steeply diving down. And the y values are getting very close to negative 4. So that left-sided limit gives me a negative 4. Then we look at the limit as x goes to 2 from the right. So we're looking at values of x slightly bigger than 2, but getting very close to 2. So we're approaching this way. And that puts us on the rightmost branch of the function, where f of x is getting very close to 2. Now, the fact that the left and right limits don't agree, again, that relates to the formal definition of continuity and tells us that there's a jump in the graph. But as far as the ordinary limit is concerned, because the left and right limits don't agree, we have to say that does not exist. In the next video, we talk about how to compute one-sided limits and ordinary limits, starting with the formula for a piecewise defined function, so in other words, we're handling these limits in a totally algebraic way instead of relying on a graph as our primary tool. I'll post a link to that video at the upper left, and I'll see you there.